So to continue our program in this room, I'd like to invite Marcelo Mazon, who is the head of sustainability and marketing at Abinki Brazil. And he will talk about new technologies in obtaining raw materials from printed packaging. Welcome, Marcelo Mazon, and have a great talk. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Marcelo Mazon, and I'm the head of sustainability and marketing here at D Inc. I'm here to show some of our technology and to tell you a bit about the Inc's history and why we decided to bring it to Brazil. I'd also like to tell you a bit about our involvement with circular economy. D Inc was created in 2018. The idea dates back from 2016, but the founders have brought it to Brazil in 2018. Our idea was to work with uh, waste that is difficult to recycle. A major concern we have today with circular economy with plastics in Brazil is how we can uh, recycle these difficult materials. So the first point we're going to tackle in this chain is exactly printed waste. So the search for technology is what drove us to uh, Cadell technology uh, here in Brazil. So the ink is bringing to Brazil this technology, which allows total removal of inks from printed plastic waste, generating a new raw material. This technology works not only for uh, flexible plastics, but also rigid ones that have undergone on the printing process. They can be post-industrial or post-consumer waste. So with it, we can reach a greater range of plastics or plastic waste, which were not um, recycled before. I remember it well when D-Ink um, brought their idea here, because this was exactly when we started uh, working with the Plastics Cooperation Network. And one of the issues that was always raised was how difficult it was to change recyclability for certain plastics, especially printed ones. So how we could include them in the chain again. Our process is basically solvent free, meaning that all the waste generated in this, prog in this process, even the inks are reused. It's a recycling process that is technically common. So we have milling. After milling, we have de-inking, where the, tr the water is treated and washed. So rev uh, waste is washed, dried, and then taken to granulation at the end. And what waste do we uh, de-ink? Rigid shavings, flexible shavings, silk printed bottles. So, for example, uh, multi-use plastic bottles, plastic labels, and even car bumpers. De-ink is able to um, de-ink any kind of plastic material whether it is rigid or flexible. So this is our motto, work now. Don't accept plastic as a pollutant. And in the circular economy concept, what we do is, if we look at the technology and how the plastic chain works today, whether it is rigid or flexible, it's normally taken to recycling cooperatives, to the recycling plant, and produces raw material with low added value. As you know, tinted material becomes black or gray or brown. So this is low added value products. 
With de-ink technology, whether it is rigid or flexible, we can remove ink and the raw material goes back directly to the chain again. So I'm going to pause a bit on this slide. So I can show you that the ink um, is different from the common recycling industry. We don't sell raw material. De-ink is here to add to the chain. So in our first plant in Itupeva, we were accelerated by Ambev. It's important to discuss this specifically because by ourselves, with all of the circular economy process, by ourselves, we would be unable to solve the issue. We need to have all of the links in the chain together with us. So this de-ink operation involves brand owners, um, transformers, the entire reverse logistics chain, and de-ink Brazil. De-ink works on a business model that is project-based. And these projects are all structured with brands. Without that, we could not do anything by ourselves. So each company has its own needs. This was a project that is now being included by Ambev in their um, uh, packaging, you know, for sodas and for drinks, they include at least 20% of our material and it performs just like virgin material. It's very interesting to see how much we're adding to the chain. The ink came to integrate the production chain. So we could bring the brand owners, weight managers, cooperatives, transformers, and startups into this work. In our specific case, working with Ambev, we've also had partnerships with other startups that were created by them, such as Green Mining. This was a bit delayed by the pandemic itself, but we do have a project to collect packaging, secondary packaging material in sales points in Sao Paulo, at bars and restaurants and condominiums. And we want to bring this material back to uh, be de-inked with other scrap. When we talk about the circular economy and difficult to recycle materials, we also work with research, development, and innovation. So what is the concept here? We already have a good and consolidated de-inking process. And this is just being approved now, but the plant is already in operation at an industrial scale full time. And now for the second um, half of this year, we will include demetallization and delamination technologies, which are things that I heard very frequently in uh, the talks during this conference. How do you work with multi-layer plastics, for example? How do you solve demetallization? This is something that we have already included in our technology, and we have this uh, under development in our lab. So during the second half of the year, we will begin to put together a new line to delaminate and demetallize plastics, and they will start operations in 2022. This is how we want to position ourselves. We want to be an innovation front for materials for research and development. So we already work with the inking and we'll work with demetallization and delamination. And then we'll even search for other technologies such as decoloration. Ideally, we can bring to the industrial scale um, many items to the circular economy cycle uh, for plastics. And this is a cru crucial point. Today, the figures we have in our circular economy are 
retained in niches that we have been recycling for a long time, such as um, flat, flexible uh, plastics or clean, rigid plastics. The idea here is to um, differentiate the entire chain. This, of course, involves investing in infrastructure, investing in reverse logistics, in communications. So this is exactly why D-Inc. is working with the entire chain. We are a hub and we're connecting the several links and the chain to make this material go back into the production cycle. This is a bit about our scalability timeline. D-Inc. Brazil plans to conclude its new plant in 2022. And we intend to build two plants a year from 2023 to 2026. And with that, I'll go back a couple of slides uh, to this um, on new technologies because this is something that we have been underscoring very frequently, the barriers for recycling plastics in Brazil and mechanical recycling. This is a very important point that we need to mention. We need to know what we're going to do and what's going to make us stand out um, and what is different about the inks process. So that concludes my presentation. And this is basically my takeaway message. Plastic waste is not trash. It's a, an innovative raw material for uh, to promote the circular economy. A very important thing is that D-Inc. is a part of a plastic cooperation network. Gustavo mentioned earlier today um, that we have been working on recyclability indexes, on guidelines so that we can work with printed plastics. So it's very important. And again, uh, this is an invitation for you. I work in communications in our network. So if you have not heard about our initiative in the Plastic Cooperation Network, Please join us so that we can make plastics more circular in Brazil. That's all. Thank you, Marcelo Mazon, the head of sustainability and marketing for D Inc. Brazil. We now have some time for questions from uh, the floor, from the attendees. The first question I've gotten here, Marcelo, is this. It was sent by Karina Mayara da Silva. What is the water, the estimated water usage to wash uh, printed inks from your materials? It's relatively low, but an important cycle is that, excuse me, an important detail is that this is a closed cycle. So water is reused. We are very concerned in our plant about natural resources as well. So we do wash it along uh, with chemical materials, but all of this is reused in the process. Nothing is wasted. It's a closed cycle. So we're just waiting for more questions to come in. As a reminder, if you'd like to ask anything to our speakers, please use the questions box at the bottom of your screen. Questions will be answered live as they come in. We have a question from Isabela Rodrigues Costa. She says, good afternoon, Marcelo. We'd like to know if your process works for high and low density film in flexible packaging. Great. Yes, it does work for both densities. And besides that, we also work with uh, PP in flexible plastics. 
right now, after 2022, we'll be able to work with uh, multi-material or multi-layer uh, packaging materials, even with barriers, PE, PET, nylon. This is all on our radar so that we can work with all kinds of package. Okay, we have another question. This is from Marcelo Yamani. Do you have any forecasts for your commercial scale in demetallization, Marcelo? Yes, exactly. So from the second half of this year, we'll be uh, building a new line for it, and it will be available in an industrial scale in, 2000, in 2022, both for delamination and demetallization. Uh, one more question, Marcelo. Graziele Aparecida de Jesus asks, during the de-inking process, do you obtain an, a uniform material at the end, or do you have a gradient of different tones from gray to black? No, it's totally uniform. It's very similar to virgin material. It's, it doesn't go black or gray. It has a natural color. So 100% of it uh, is virgin, very similar to prime material when you generate it from a process. And it's not gray. It's not black. It's not yellowish. It has the exact, exact same appearance as the virgin material. One more question, Marcelo, technology used by the ink allows for recycling of any type of plastic materials? Yes, any type of plastic material, uh, whether it be rigid or flexible. So we're talking about PE, uh, high, low polyethylene. We're talking also about PP. We're talking about PET. We're talking about all these types of materials. Yes. Uh, biodegradable materials. Can these be used in the process in your company? Um, biodegradable, as has been mentioned, is rather complicated. There is the possibility of it contaminating the recycling chain. So we do not recommend and we do not use at this moment biodegradable raw materials. In this recycling, yeah, the audio failed. What do you think is the potential for recycling done by De Inki. Look, I believe that we have the capacity for expanding to 10 plants around Brazil in five years, adding new technologies. And But it's very difficult to measure the potential. In truth, we have a, a huge range of different fronts to work on and productive capacity to, for precisely for items that today don't have any value whatsoever in the chain. So if we use printed material, multi-layer material, if we do this in any cooperative or collectors, that you're going to see that this material doesn't isn't worth anything. So the capacity for this work front is huge and we can't even measure it yet. One more question. How do you see the future of the utilization of non-printed materials? For example, first-time usage resins. Look, I think it's going to coexist the mechanical recycling work with the chemical recycling with the prime material of first usage for packaging. Some segments, such as hospitals, 
some segments that demand certain chemical materials that uh, attack the products. These are still going to have a demand, no matter the technology. They, they're going to demand virgin material. However, all the other segments, uh, the more we advance in technology with the mechanical recycling, and after with the chemical recycling, we will be able to work parallel. I think the way towards the future is high, a lot more space for chemical, uh, mechanical recycling than chemical making this product come back into the chain. But it's still something uh, we'll see the future in a few years because there's a lot to evolve industrially in terms of profitability and cost. We have to think about this. All these processes, they have a cost. And we have to understand the country that we're in, the economy and the macro contest to be able to apply certain technologies here that perhaps will work in other countries, but perhaps won't work here. Mikael Fehiragovo, he asks the packaging that add, uh, aggregate in their construction, can they also be processed? Yes. Yeah, for sure. When we talk about metallization, we talk about layers and we are able to work them, yes. What we still aren't able to do is work with packagings when it, when it's not only aluminium and polyethylene, but also paper and other things, then that is something that we still don't do. But when we talk strictly about metals and plastics, yes, we will be able to from 2022 on. And how is the, in what stage is this technology in the US and Asia? Is this widespread? It's a new technology. We we have the rights for Latin America. We have the licensing rights. Rights. There are ink plants in Spain, in Italy. They already work on an industrial scale, and in the U.S., we just started a plant plant there. So it's new technology in the uh, detinting specifically, and. In, in all fronts. So in the whole world, this has uh, showed up during the last three years, let's speak like that. So it's extremely new technology that's beginning to be explored in these countries. Karina Mayara da Silva asks, food packaging that use flexible packaging and perhaps contaminated by fats, are these recycled by our process? If yes, is there any separation of the type of waste for a posterior destination? Okay, well, that's one of the big challenges that we're going to have uh, during the next years. Precisely the separation of the PCRs and the uh, these food packages impregnated with fat often the flexibles as she mentioned where you that come from let me give an example meats and butchers and they have the the odor problem the fat we can remove in the process the problem of the process still is the strong odor that is generated by this type of waste so this has to be treated and this is one of the uh, things that we're solving with partners as well uh, additives processes to try to improve the situation and be able to incorporate this in an industrial scale as well and how is uh, how the and visa licenses for the use of this material well this is the barrier in brazil and it's very much discussed in the cooperation network for the circular economy in Brazil. 
really to be able to reach different levels, it is necessary to work with Anvisa uh, agency. Today, there are no other plants, uh, unless we talk about pet. The, uh, the other plants are not certified for food. There are very few uh, certifications for food growers in polyethylenes. But it depends much more on the process and the agency of certain countries than effectively on the technology. So it's not possible, for example, to use American or Canadian technology or even American approved by the FDA and bring it here because Anvisa has other rules and regulations and our waste here in Brazil, let's not forget that we are a country uh, we are a developing country, so the reverse logistics chain is completely different from that of developed countries. So the rate of contamination is much higher. So it is a huge challenge. We believe that through the cooperation network, we will be able to uh, certify the process and here in Brazil, not only the ink, but also processes in Brazil for post food consumption. A uh, guest here asks about fat waste and what about other uh, things that can be present in this process? Can these be a problem as well? Well, we believe the following. I think the fat waste perhaps is the the most problematic of all the work that we have to do post-consumption, the rest with the cleaning, with the process, with the detinting, we're able to work with them. What colors are the most... No. No, 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 existe. Uh, o grau, uh, não no, é... it's not even the issue of the color or the percentage of the uh, of the process of the de-inking. It de-inks it from the plastic. So the color is not a problem because it uh, goes together with the process. Materials like PVC, PET, can they also be used in this process? For sure. Yes, we are able to, and as I said, as of 20, 2022, these multi-layers, we're going to be able to work with them as well. We have another question here. Uh, pet bottles, they can have a high rate of pre-cycled. Is this an important market for you? Pet? bottle it's not our focus so far because the process itself currently uh, of food grade is already consolidated so our focus is much more in uh, rigid and uh, flexible leftovers that have not been used in the circular economy the process of PET is highly consolidated in Brazil, including with plants, high-scale plants for food grade. There's another question. The cost, the industrial cost of this new process, do they allow you to be competitive for this product? Yeah. So much so we already have Bevy, who works with us, but as all the scale of recycling, there is a trade-off. So case by case, we have to study the need of the client and the economical feasibility to understand if to de-ink the process and go back to doing it virgin, then it, if it will be natural, if this compensates economical, financially wise. So the recycled material, it is worth mentioning, it becomes a much more important product due to the global goals of companies that are 
that they are committed to. So there's a need to have recycled material incorporated. And it's on this vision that we work with D Inc. It's not uh, a company that sells raw material or focused on the costs of uh, low added value material. We work with PCR with a high value and with companies that have goals that they need to achieve. What's the growth rate that you estimate for this product? We are estimating a growth rate of around around 25% per year. Asiatic market? Until when we're able to stabilize the demand of su and supply and demand, it would it depend more on that than our industrial capacity. The Asiatic market is a market that has already approved this type of resin, this recycled ebon. If so, which countries? The Asiatic market that I know of, not yet. They are studies of de-ink plants in China, but for the time being, we have no knowledge of that. De-ink has a, license, a user license. Can they export to other markets? If you have the license, can you export to other markets? We have to understand the situation where and what markets these are. If we're talking about Europe, United States, where we have de-ink plants, no. But if we talk about Latin America or other countries that do not have the technology, that's something that we can study. If the rate of 25% a year, does this mean that in three years you have to duplicate your production? Our rate is have two plants per year. We, our idea is up to 2026 20, having 10 de-ink plants spread through Brazil because these are going to be much more dedicated uh, to certain processes or projects. So, for example, we, we're going to work with integrated products. So we work together with to, to, to build this need. Marcos Juarez is asking two questions. Where are the physical installations of your company? The, it's a huge country and how to make the logistics feasible to attend to all this dimension. Very good question. Today we are in Itupeva, in the interior of the state of Sao Paulo, strategically a central area. We're 70 kilometers away from Sao Paulo, close to the town of Jundiaí. But the idea of having 10 plants spread around Brazil is much more due to the fact of being able to geographically attend the country as a whole than uh, the scale. Of course, the two go hand in hand, but we know that reverse logistics of plastics, especially flexible, which is very light material, is very complicated. So the plants have to be close to the source precisely to be able to make this uh, something feasible. We have another question from Marcus Heischer. As for the cost of all these process, do they bring economical advantages if you compare to the usage of virgin materials? Look. That's the million dollar question of circular econo economy. Up to where does it go? The question is, it has a similar cost to virgin material and it's difficult to operate virgin material, which is in a totally different scale, but normally it has a similar cost to virgin material. And it's a change of a thought process that is taking place more and more in the world, and especially in Brazil, which has been working for 30, 40 years with mechanical recycling, where the recycled material was always uh, an option of cost, entry cost, and that has been changing with the global commitments, uh, made by the companies, the pressure on the circular economy of plastics, 
makes us search for more sophisticated uh, solutions for a product of high quality with a good performance, whether physical, aesthetical, aesthetic, chemical, similar to virgin material. This costs something. And it ends up by being very similar to the recycled material. So these are things that we saw in the pandemic, especially in the beginning with the material, the recycled materials is in some more expensive sources than uh, raw, than virgin material. But even so, it has to be incorporated in the process because of the signed commitments that the companies have agreed to. Is there public financing for this plan? We have uh, financing here in the state of Sao Paulo, but the idea is to get private financing for the next scalability. Marcelo Mazon, muito obrigado. Marcelo.